Welcome. In this little lecture, we're going to talk about the muscles and nerves of the cruise, which is that region below the stifle. Before we get there, we need to review that sciatic nerve is going to course down in the caudal thigh. It's going to branch into the tibial nerve, which is going to go caudally and between the bellies of the gastrocnemius muscle. And then the common peroneal nerve is going to come more craniolateral. We see in this image here, sneaking out from under the distal end of the biceps femoris muscle, we're going to find that common peroneal. As it does, it's going to branch into the deep peroneal nerve, which is going to be our primary innervation to the craniolateral muscles of the cruise. And then also the superficial peroneal nerve which is primarily cutaneous or subcutaneous innervation but a branch of that is going to supply the lateral digital extensor muscle. Okay here once again gastrocnemius muscle, long digital extensor, lateral digital extensor. Here's our sciatic nerve coming down branching into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve, we see the deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. That superficial peroneal nerve is often lost when we skin the animal. So the cranial lateral muscles, it's going to be the cranial tibial, which is not seen. It's going to be very flat and sitting right up against the cranial surface of the tibia, and the long digital extensor and the pronius tertius. The pronius tertius is sitting between the long digital extensor and the cranial tibial. We'll see that in a, another image later. See the lateral digital extensor. So those are the cranial lateral muscles. Caudal muscles, we'll see the deep digital flexor, the gastrocnemius. Remember that superficial digital flexor belly is hiding underneath the heads of the gastrocnemius. And then the popliteus, of course, is also not seen in this image. So these cranial lateral ones, innervated by the peroneal nerve, these are going to be flexors of the hock, extensors of the digit. Remember in the front limb, the extensors of the digit also extended the carpus. But in this case, because our flexion angle is opposite in the tarsus, it's going to be the extensors of the digit are going to flex the hock. Okay. Likewise, in these caudal muscles, innervated by the tibial nerve, we're going to have extensors of the hock and flexors of the digit, except for the popliteus, which is going to flex the stifle. Remember, if it doesn't say digital in the name, it has no action on the digits. Okay, we've mentioned this peroneus tertius. Peroneus tertius in the horse, unlike the bovine, is a fibrous band going from the extensor fossa down to the third metatarsal bone as well as the fourth tarsal bone. And because it is a fibrous band, in order to flex the stifle, we need to first flex the hock. Okay. Also, the superficial digital flexor muscle has a very fibrous component in it and it goes from the supracondylar fossa and then remember it has an attachment to the calcaneus and so therefore in order to extend the stifle we also need to first extend the hop. So any of you that have picked up the hind limb of a horse recall how when you pick it up first you flex both of these joints and then you extend both of them caudally. Okay, this is why. So this is referred to as the reciprocal apparatus. So that creates parallelogram here. So in order to flex, we must flex. In order to extend, we must extend. Okay, so in the hind limb, we see the movements then of the stifle and the hock, as well as the fetlock joints coupled, so that these three joints are going to flex and extend in synchrony due to the action of this reciprocal apparatus. Okay. 
Now in the horse we are able to lock the stifle by using the vastus medialis to bring the patella into the resting position which locks it up over the medial ridge of the trochlea and so once we have locked the stifle then that's fixed in extension and that's going to cause locking of the hock in extension so this is part of our stay apparatus one of the important things about the reciprocal apparatus in the horse is that when we have femoral nerve damage recall that the femoral nerve innervates the quadriceps femoris muscle which is the muscles that extend the stifle if we are unable to extend the stifle then we are unable to extend the hock and so therefore the whole hind limb will collapse whereas we will see in the bovine that they still have some ability to extend the hock even if they've lost the ability to extend the stifle. Okay, notice that the pronus tertius is not part of this stay apparatus. When we do have the locking of the stifle and therefore hock in that, the tension is on the superficial digital flexor muscle. You'll find that that pronus tertius is very lax at this point. Okay, on occasion we can get a rupture of the pronus tertius. This usually occurs when a horse is walking and as the stifle is flexed, the limb slips caudally. Most characteristic feature of this is the ability to both extend the hock and flex the stifle simultaneously. Okay, usually these animals are lame but able to bear weight on the limb. The affected limb is going to have somewhat of a jerky motion as it is brought forward. The stay apparatus will still be functional in these animals. Conservative treatment is used usually just prolonged rest, usually about four months, and the prognosis is favorable. Okay, we also see the condition in horses of a locking patella. This occurs when the animal is going from extension to flexion during locomotion so they are bringing that stifle back forward. In most severe cases the patella becomes fixed and they are unable to flex the leg. Less severe cases they'll show some partial intermittent upward fixation which produces a visible and sometimes audible clicking as the patella frees itself. In younger horses just increasing the exercise to improve the muscle tone may be all that is required to reduce the incidence of this condition. For many years they would recommend cutting the medial patellar ligament. It is effective but it is not without adverse effects. One of those effects would be eventual fragmentation of the patella. Okay now they're using a newer technique where they split the upper third of the medial patellar ligament and they split it longitudinally, so with the direction of fibers, this just causes a localized desmitis with localized thickening of the ligament, and that seems to do very well. Okay, let's have a little closer look now at these muscles. Here once again is our common pronial nerve, with the deep pronial nerve, and the superficial pronial nerve which may have been removed with the skin. It's our cranial tibial muscle. Sometimes we can just see a little bit of it. Most of it is sitting flat up against the cranial lateral surface of the tibia. Here on the right we have a reflection of the long digital extensor so we can see more of that cranial tibial. The pronius tertius is going to lie between the long digital extensor and that cranial tibial muscle. And here we have the lateral digital extensor. So as we said, these are innervated by the pronial nerve, important in flexing of the hock and extending the digit. Just for completion, deep digital flexor muscle and gastrocnemius. Okay, here's another condition that's rather interesting. This is referred to as string halt. We see that the horse is going to hyperflex the limb, but the downward movement of the limb is normal. So as it lifts the limb, it's going to be more exaggerated. 
This is commonly seen in Australia due to sweet pea poisoning, but often it can be caused from a neuropathy of either the sciatic, the pronia, or the tibial nerves. Some horses, if you do a tenectomy or cutting the tendon at the lateral digital extensor, seems to be effective. Couldn't tell you why that is. Okay, looking down at the region of the hawk, this is a dorsal view of the hawk. Here we see the cranial tibial muscle coming down. It has a dorsal ligament as well as a medial ligament. That medial ligament is referred to as the cunean tendon. Notice now the pronius tertius coming down. It's also going to have a dorsal ligament, but then it also has a lateral ligament. Now that cunean tendon is going to cross and go right up over cunean bursa. In cases of bursitis or with osteoarthritis of the hock, which is known as spavin, the cunean tendon may be transected to relieve the pressure off the joint, but the value of actually doing this is questionable. Okay, just real quickly show you one more muscle. Here we have this short digital extensor muscle. You will see that its tendon basically it just blends into the long digital extensor muscle. Okay, let's have a look at some retinaculi. We start here with the proximal extensor retinaculum which is at the distal end of the tibia. It's going to bind down the tendon of the cranial tibial muscle, pronius tertius, and the long digital extensor tendon. Okay. In the middle of the tarsus, we find the middle extensor retinaculum. It's going to actually form a ring around the long digital extensor tendon. It's going to attach to the calcaneus and the lateral tendon of the pronius tertius. And then finally we have the distal extensor retinaculum at the proximal end of the cannon bone. It's going to bind down the tendons of the lateral and the long digital extensor. Okay, let's have a look at these caudal muscles. A little bit of the cranial tibial on the medial side here. There we can see the popliteus muscle. Remember how it attaches on the lateral side and then fans out onto the medial side, attaching to the tibia. The deep digital flexor muscle here. Notice its medial head. I outlined it right there. Whose tendon does not go through the tarsal tunnel with the other heads. There's the gastrocnemius muscle, and there's the superficial digital flexor tendon. Remember the muscle is kind of tucked under the gastrocnemius muscle. The deep digital flexor tendon is going to receive a accessory ligament just distal to the attachment of the tendon of the medial head, distal to the tarsus. This check ligament, however, is often absent it is very small. The attachment of the superficial digital flexor tendon to the calcaneus kind of acts as a check ligament in the hind limb. Okay, remember all these muscles here are innervated by the tibial nerve, which we can see coursing more so on the medial side between the deep digital flexors and the common calcaneus tendon. Okay, in this image here, we've, we've cut and reflected the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. We can see our superficial digital flexor tendon, our deep digital flexor muscle, and we can see the popliteus muscle. Okay, I got it highlighted on the image to the right. So that popliteus muscle, remember what the action is. It's going to flex the stifle, also cause medial rotation of the leg. Comparison now, bovine and equine, cranial tibial, pronius tertius. Notice that in the bovine, the pronius tertius is going to be the most cranial muscle. 
whereas in the equine it is the long digital extensor muscle tucked under the long digital extensor muscle in the bovine we're going to see the medial digital extensor and the like the dog the bovine has a peroneus longus muscle then we have the lateral digital extensor both bovine and equine have this short digital extensor muscle here we can see the deep digital flexor muscle okay once again the belly of the superficial digital flexor is going to be hidden deep to the gastrocnemius the soleus muscle sitting next to the lateral head of the gastrocnemius then we also see here the suspensory ligament which in the bovine remember is a muscle so it's the interosseous muscle and the popliteus we do not see here okay so these caudal muscles once again innervated by the tibial nerve these cranial lateral by the peroneal nerve okay let's look at a specimen of the bovine here one being the cranial tibial muscle two which has been kind of reflected is the peroneus tertius it's been reflected so that we can see the long and medial digital extensor muscles see now the, the peroneus longus which is not in the equine lateral digital extensor deep digital flexor the soleus and the gastrocnemius muscle and that's all I got there thanks